What's the story behind today's propaganda-driven culture? Welcome to Critical Thinking Skin, where we look at how you can think about any face-challenging message and arrive at a biblical, logical conclusion yourself. I'm Patricia Engler, and today for something different, let's look at the history behind one of the most important things to watch out for when critically thinking, and that's propaganda. We've seen earlier that propaganda, which is communication that tries to persuade by appealing to something besides logic, exploits our brain's automatic thinking systems to help us make snap decisions without careful, logical reasoning. Propaganda is a key driver of the consumer culture we live in, where countless advertisements and other messages vie to sway our beliefs and everyday behavior. But it hasn't always been like this. By looking back at where propaganda techniques came from, we can become more aware of how propagandists operate and how to think critically about their messages. And really, many modern propaganda techniques trace back to World War I and to a journalist named Edward Bernays. Born in 1891, Bernays was the close nephew of Sigmund Freud, the rather notorious psychologist whose unbiblical and largely unscientific conjectures encourage people to think about how unconscious processes may affect human behavior. Bernays was fascinated by this idea, and he wondered if by exploiting unconscious processes he could influence public behavior and ultimately culture. In World War I, the U.S. Committee on Public Information hired Bernays to garner public and corporate war support, a task Bernays described as psychological warfare. Meanwhile, the government channeled findings from the fledgling field of psychology as well as sociology to develop new ways to shape public opinion about the war, including by harnessing the influence of authority figures and creating emotional appeals. After the war, Bernays realized the same propaganda techniques which helped drive the war agenda could also apply to manipulating consumer behavior. And his plan largely worked. For instance, it's Bernays we can thank for promoting the idea that bacon and eggs is the classic American breakfast. As before his campaigns, Bernays said that a typical American breakfast consisted of little more than coffee and maybe a roll. Another one of Bernays' more infamous campaigns involved increasing tobacco sales to women and linking smoking to women's rights by rebranding cigarettes as torches of freedom. I'm not making this up. In his influential book entitled Propaganda, Bernays concluded, Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men we have never heard of. Now, Bernays recognized the potential for these powerful propaganda methods to be harnessed for producing evil as well as good, but he didn't necessarily realize how this would play out in his lifetime. After World War II, however, Bernays was shocked to learn that Hitler's own propagandist, Joseph Goebbels, had relied on Bernays' techniques to drive the Nazi campaign against the Jews. Ultimately, it's clear that the aims and effectiveness of propaganda, which Bernays called the conscious and intelligent manipulation of organized habits and opinions of the masses, demands us to think critically in response. After all, while much propaganda promotes things which are probably harmless, like specific brands of orange juice, other propaganda promotes unbiblical messages that ultimately undermine the gospel and society, like the idea that all humans are products of naturalistic evolution rather than persons created in God's image. Types of propaganda I've seen promoting this message include textbook pictures that make apes seem more human-like, museum displays that make humans seem more ape-like, and classes where authoritative professors assert statements like, intelligent design is a whacked out tea party movement, and there's not a single piece of evidence against evolution, both things I heard in my classes. Schools, in fact, are such key centers for the strategic decimation of propaganda that Bernays himself wrote in a chapter which mainly reflected on public relations at universities. The normal school should provide for the training of the educator to make him realize that his is a twofold job, education as a teacher and education as a propagandist. That's why it's so important for students and all Christians to be armed with biblical, critical thinking tools to recognize and respond to propaganda. 
For more on how to think critically about any face challenging message, you can access my other CT scan videos packed with tactics, tips, and tools that helped me as a Christian student at Secular University. Thank you for watching. Hey, it's Patricia. Just wanting to let you know that if you like these videos, are on board to share the message of biblical authority, and want to give, you're welcome to help Answers in Genesis produce more content like this and equip more people to defend their faith by making a one-time donation or becoming a monthly supporter by clicking the link below. Thanks so much.